Shares of Snowflake are down 7% or so at the time of making this video, despite a beat across the board for the quarter and a beat for guidance as well. Oh, and by the way, they also increased their share buyback program by around $2.5 billion. So does that make any sense? Why is the stock down? Well, let's discuss all of that. Currently, like I said, it's down 7.2% at the time of making this video. Since it went public, it's down 46%. Year to date, it's now down more than 35%. So yeah, it's a stock that has not performed quite well in the public markets. It has a market cap of around $45 billion and a forward PE of 202.6 times. Now, yes, this is a company that is expected to grow top and bottom line, quite fast, faster than the average. So, okay, you get a premium. But how big of a premium can you get? That's the question. Now, of course, we know since the stock was expensive before, stock is down quite a lot, then yes, forward PE, EV to EBITDA, price to sales, price to free cash flow is all going to be lower than the four year mean. Again, that does not mean that it's an automatic buy. Just like when we look at companies where the current valuation metrics are higher then the five-year mean does not automatically mean that it is a sell. You have to look at the business. Now, of course, growth as a whole has not been an issue for Snowflake, whether it's revenue, free cash flow, that's not an issue. Well, net income though in the last 12 months is still negative, but the big issue, the biggest issue in my opinion is this, SBC as a percentage of revenue in the last 12 months is still above 40%. Yes, it's nice to have another share buyback program of $2.5 billion, but I think investors would rather see SBC as a percentage of revenue come down quite significantly. So now before we go and look at the results, if you enjoy this type of videos, hit all the buttons, like, subscribe, notification bell, do all of that. Thank you very much. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and end up in comment with a top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. Let's start off with a comment from the CEO here posted on X. Proud of our strong Q2 results, we exceeded the high end of our guidance with product revenue increasing 30% year over year. Our remaining performance obligations or RPO totaled $5.2 billion, reflecting an impressive 48% year over year growth. Given these strong results, we have again raised our product revenue outlook for the year. I'm encouraged by the strength of our core business and our advancements in AI are nothing short of transformative. Innovation at Snowflake is moving at an unprecedented pace. In the first half of the year alone, we brought as much product to market as we did all of last year. As we enter the second half of this year, our focus is on continuing to deliver unparalleled value to our customers, maintaining the highest standards of product quality and driving the continued success of our go-to-market strategy. I'm energized about where we are going and the opportunities we have to deliver even greater impact for our customers. And so if we look at the major overview here, product revenue increased 30% year over year to $829.3 million, net revenue retention rate 127%, more on that a bit later, total customers over 10,000, and that's a 21% year over year growth, Customers with a trailing 12 months product revenue greater than $1 million is up 28%. Snowflake marketplace listing keeps on growing nicely up 30% year over year. And Forbes global 2000 customers, it only grew 5% over year to 736. Now, here we have a nice graph, same as last quarter from Hamin Ball, works for Altimeter, Brad Gerstner. So last quarter, we saw a clear reacceleration in net new ARR year over year growth. Now in Q2, <laughs> a huge, huge decrease here, negative 21%. That's because Q2 of last year was an impressive quarter, but again, the difference here is quite something. Now with regards to RPO, product revenue and billings, they say here a couple of things. Product revenue is the leading indicator of growth. RPO represents contracted future revenue not yet recognized, and billings, variable payments terms mean billings, are not necessarily indicative of future consumption patterns. So basically, the important metric is product revenue, then RPO, and then billings. As we look at annual product revenue, that increased 38% year over year, with quarterly product revenue increasing 30% year over year. Still, I mean, this company is growing quite fast, there's no doubt about that. Then looking at RPO, so that was $5.2 billion, representing 48% year over year, also a beat the analyst estimates. So that's another check. As for net revenue retention rate, so 
It sits at 127%, but it has come down for the last couple of quarters. Now, of course, I am yet to see a company that can have net revenue retention rates above 130% and stay like that. So yes, it has come down. 120% is still very, very good. Very, very good. Now, the question is, how much longer are we going to see decreasing net revenue retention rate? If this is the bottom, great. If not, then yeah, how much lower can we go? For example, Palantir is much lower than that. We'd love to see Palantir back above 120%. As for margin expansion, you can clearly see this fiscal year 22, 23, 24. So non-gap product gross margin went from 74% to 78%. By the way, it's, it's quite funny that they make it seem visually as if these are huge, huge increases, but at the end of the day, it's just four percentage points increase, not, not more than that. Non-gap operating margin went from negative 3% in fiscal year 2022 to now positive 8%, and adjusted free cash flow margin also on a non-gap basis went from 12% to 29%. For the third quarter, we're only going to look here on a gap basis, so product revenue was also a beat that is up 22% year over year to come between 850 and 855 million dollars. As for the fiscal year 2025 guidance, so year-over-year -year product growth increased just a tiny bit. It's now sitting here at 26% year-over-year growth to come in at $3.35 billion. Now, the increase is nice. It's not that much, but it also shows that overall for fiscal 2025, it's growing slower than the current quarter. As for non-GAAP product gross margin, still about the same, 75%, non-GAAP operating margin, 3%, and non-GAAP adjusted free cash flow margin, 26%, no changes there. So overall, I guess, I guess the market would have liked to see maybe a bigger raise in product revenue growth, right? If we compare it to what we've got right now, that is growing at 30% year over year, and for fiscal 2025, only growing 26%, probably the market was expecting a bit more. And now looking at the graph right now, it has given away all of its gains from the past two weeks, meaning we're going to go under the 50 and the 20 day moving average. And we're back to $124, which is where it rebounded a little bit here in June, where we saw some support here in January of 2023. And let's say a little bit here, June of 2022, but we did go lower at the start of August, that Black Monday, we did go all the way well, close to $100. RSI is going to be low, but not oversold. Far from it, actually. So yeah, this is, this is literally a perfect example of great quarter. Well, great quarter. Good quarter, good guidance, fast-growing company, but it's just priced to perfection. Maybe the market was expecting more from guidance. Maybe we all thought, oh, new CEO coming in two quarters ago, guidance was sandbagged, so we were expecting bigger raises. That's the thing. That's the thing. Guidance in our mind, let's say, was sandbagged, so we were expecting we were expecting maybe more from guidance, especially in the second half of the year. Could still happen. Could still happen, right? Three months from now, we have the same conversation and look, oh, actually, guidance for Q4 for fiscal year 2025 is now 27% year-over-year growth or 28% year-over-year growth for product growth. Could be, could be. Again, it's a good company, but very, very expensive stock. That's all. That's probably why it is down. If I missed something, do let me know down in the comment section below. Do share your thoughts as well. Like, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.